Today I'm with Sally May Hassana, uh, former elite boxer from Australia and current coach in Egypt. Thanks for giving me time. How are you doing, Sally? Good, and you, Andy? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Now, uh, which part of Egypt are you training? So I'm in Cairo at the moment, um, and I have my own academy at, uh, in, based in Cairo. Um, however, I'm part of other entities like government entities as well as a coach. And so, what's Cairo like? As a, what's, a, what's the city like and what are the people like? It's, it's really, really hectic. Um, even though I'm, I'm not like 100% Australian, like I'm, a half, I'm half Australian, half Egyptian, but I never grew up here. So like I'm a third culture kid. You know what I mean? So it, it was all, um, the people, uh, like, it was all new to me. Um, and it was really, really difficult to understand the culture, especially when it comes to, like, you know, being a woman, you know, in this kind of, like, industry and, like, in that particular sport, which is very male-dominant. Like, even in Western societies, it's still a male-dominant sport. So this is like, you know, North African, Middle Eastern kind of culture. Um, yeah, and it's I was going to ask you that. So how popular is boxing in Egypt and how is it perceived? It's, it is becoming, well, it's, it's popular. It's a popular sport. It's one of the popular individual sports. Maybe it doesn't get that much like media attention, but it's, it's like that everywhere, isn't it? I already said you have to go on the bag. Boom, throw, boom, throw. You want to listen? Please go on the back. When you're finished here, you need to shuffle and then go on the back. If you haven't done, please go. Give me double. Now, going to your own career, your own amateur career, you bought, you lived mm. in Australia for many years, didn't you? Yeah. Um, Yes. What was your first amateur bout and how did that go? Um, look, I started as a kickboxer and that was like in Queensland, like a long time ago. You know, I was like still in high school and then I stopped for quite some time because of injuries. And then I, you know, went back to um, being an athlete, but I was like a soccer player. Uh, and then, you know, after even I got married, I thought, you know, I'd, I'd really want to go back to combat sport. And then my first bout, like, uh, was it with the league. Like, it wasn't even an ABA, um, like, bout. Um, so there's two different entities in Australia. There's, like, league boxing and then there's the ABA, which is AIBA. Um, and that was in, like, 2012 sometime, around that time. And, um, yeah, so I was, like, just getting into the local bouts on the central coast in New South Wales and Newcastle, uh, many in Newcastle, actually, I was kind of like, you know, in the Newcastle area most of the time for boxing. And yeah, then I changed. Go. It went, it went fine, but it was like, I wanted then to sort of like go a step higher. And then I went into the ABA. Um, and then I went into like titles, like New South Wales titles, um, and then I went to like uh, King of the Ring and uh, and um, and the uh, Golden Gloves, which was one like the big one of the biggest tournaments that you know that I won, and that was like that was quite good. That was quite a an achievement for me, I reckon. Now I, I said to you, I watched an interview you did on Ladies United, and a very good interview, I definitely yeah. worth a watch. And you mentioned your first coach as a big heavyweight Australian and I thought is she on about big Bob Mirovich there is that who you was on yeah. about yes 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 I yes, only Bob. recognize that because my son he, he's an elite boxer and he he spent a year in Australia and he boxed and Bob did some sessions with him and he was yeah. a, uh, he boxed he trained at Erina and uh, uh oh what a small world yeah. it's such a small world isn't it it is it is. When you said he, he was an immigrant and he was a big heavyweight, I thought it's going to be him. 
So, yeah. Well, yeah, it's Australia is a, a society, like, based on immigrants, really. You know what I mean? Like, the majority now is, like, an immigrant society. So there's a lot of, like, Maltese. There's a lot of, like, Croatians. There's a lot of, like, Italian Australians. There's, like, you know, there's there's so many, like, uh, it's, it's a very diverse society. And, yes, like, you know, it's such a small world. The Central Coast, like, where Erina is, you know, where your son went, is on the central coast where I used to live. And um, boxing is quite a big thing on the central coast is like, there's a lot of like uh, places where you can box. There's clubs, there's several clubs being a small, um, I don't want to call it suburb, but it's like a, it's a small area compared to Sydney, but it's got heaps of clubs that compete. Yeah, Sorry. I lived there for about 30 years ago. My family live in Terrigal, which is, is not oh, where I live. Oh, that's where I live too. Oh, that's it. <laughs> it is a small world. <laughs> oh, yeah, my yeah, cousin's still did. there. She's on Scenic Highway in Terrigal. And my son used oh. to run up the Haven as he's training. Yes, yes, that's where I used to run with, with my dog, actually, up to the, you know, just on the Esplanade and then go up the Haven. and. Yeah. And then, uh, and, and yeah, I know where Scenic Highway is. Yeah, it's a stunning part of the world. It must have been hard to leave. <laughs> Beautiful. Exa yeah, it's completely different. Cairo is, is huge. It's hectic. Um, it's like, you know, any big city. Um, it's polluted. There's a lot of smog. Um, but there's, there's a, it's, it's vi you know, vibrant. Like, it's got flavour. You know what I mean? It's got a, a very, very heavy flavour. Um, so after yeah. that first bout, Sally, where did you amateur career go? Well, you know what? Like bringing up Bob Mirovic, you know, he asked me like, "What did you like? What do you want with with boxing? Like, why? Like, why are you boxing?" And I, I said like, "I, I want to become a coach. Um, I want more girls to be in this sport." but I can't really like get them to feel it unless I'm, I've actually done it, you know? So I need to be in the ring there to experience what they go through and, and possibly now like I can, you know, understand what they're going through and you know how like before the bouts, they all get nervous and what they need to do. I had to go through the whole nine yards, um, you know, so just to learn um, the, the whole process. And you said you mentioned the Golden Gloves there, which was the tournament yeah. that you won. Was that at the end of your amateur career? And I found it yeah. interesting how you described that tournament. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of towards the end. Yeah, kind of towards the end. Uh, had, I had already started like coaching, you know, and uh, and it was fantastic. It was a fantastic experience. It was huge. It was great. And it involves other countries, doesn't it? It's not just Australia. Yeah. For the yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a regional, yes, it's a regional tournament. It had like New Zealand, it had um, Fiji, Papua New Guinea, uh, New Caledonia. So, you know, the and you get all the islands like, you know, Tonga, Samoa. So it was, it was pretty big. And what was the fight like that won you the tournament? What are your memories well, of that? It was unreal. It was just, I don't know. I, I, I just had no clue. I just went and I said, I, you know, I think I'm ready and I'll just go and, and try my luck. You know, I really need to win it. I need to win a big, like, you know, prestigious tournament. If I need, like, you know, if I want to become a coach and I, if, I, if I want to be um, credible, at least, I really need to have, like, a, a good title under my belt. And, uh, and this is why I went and, 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 you know, I wanted to go through that experience and it went pretty well. It went pretty well. I, and, you know, the first bout and, and, and then went to the quarterfinal, then went to the semifinal, it was all going pretty good. Now, after you won that tournament and did the bouts after, you, you stopped your amateur career and you moved over to Egypt. How yeah. did you get into coaching in Egypt? Well... I started like, you know, trying to, uh, you know, start my own academy, just like I said, you know, like a private academy. And, um, and I met like, uh, the local, uh, the local coach from a youth club, like a government youth club, uh, which is not like a very, you know, rich place. That's where a lot of like the locals and the less privileged 
it's a very less privileged place. Um, I even sent my son there because this is where you learn to box, you know, it's not in those like, you know, shiny commercial gyms, you know what I mean? Mm. You really have to go and learn in a, in a tough, in a tough place. So I went and met the, the coach in the local um, youth club and I said, look, how can we start something and, you know, I'd like to help and I'd like to train some girls. Do you have any girls here? He said, yeah, but I don't like to train them. And like, you know, they, he started discussing all the problems with like, you know, training females and whatnot. And he said, well, if you can help me with that, that would be great. And um, I started my own academy and I started inviting some of the local girls, like the less privileged ones, uh, raising funds for them and, and whatnot. And it all went from there. Now, you say, you say that where well, you've uh, started coaching females in Egypt. How, yeah. what, how did you sell it to the parents, the benefits of boxing? Different culture to Australia. How did you yeah. sell it? Yeah. Um, it, you know, the, the martial arts, like uh, martial arts is, is quite big, like everywhere you get. So there's a lot of girls in martial arts, like in karate, in taekwondo and... and um, I don't know, maybe it's because like what they wear is like decent. <laughs> so maybe they allow them to join martial arts. But anyways, I was like how I explained it to them. I, I told them it's it's a combat sport. You allow your daughters to go to karate, to, to kung fu even. Like they have this kung fu and and um, and taekwondo. So it's it's almost the same. It's, it's amateur. They only do three rounds. Um, for the young ones, it's only like two minute rounds. And if anyone gets hurt, the fight stops. They don't, get, I, I had to like educate them, you know, because they thought like you, they watch all those movies and they don't want their girls like, you know, to get hurt and like break their noses and like, oh, they want their girl to get married after a bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so I, I was like educating them and, and stuff. And also being a female coach, they were able to trust me because you know it was hard for them to leave their their girls their daughters or sisters around boys or male coaches so sometimes a lot of um a lot of families don't allow the girls to travel to tournaments because there's no female chaperone like there's no female coach so now that i started and it was i'm proud of that that happened you know the club that um that i represented like the two clubs that i represented it was the first time for them to join like with a with a female team and they started like you know they won medals in in a very short period of time i mean it's my third year here like in my in my second season we started getting pretty good medals in the in the elites and and that's because the parents trusted you know the daughters to travel with me and that trust doesn't come overnight, does it? It, it comes over time. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I had to like speak to them. They come meet me. They spend time with me. They come and watch the like training sessions and the, the whole lot. And does it seem to grow in? I mean, it is in the UK. And when I do these interviews around the world, female boxing especially is just growing. It seems to be growing and growing. Is it the same in Egypt? It is. Yes, it is. There's a lot of like demand now. Like the girls want like they really want to get somewhere with it they want to achieve something um the federation is generous like you know of like allowing a lot but the the thing is that here here's what it is uh the lifespan of a female boxer in egypt is not very long um because of cultural reasons because once like uh, the girl is like graduated from college or like you know finished high school the parents start thinking oh you know she, like you know it's time for her to get married so it, it all sort of like declines and like they start you know distracting her with like you know meeting uh, you know a suitor for marriage and and all that kind of you know business and um and this is why i like not i think i'm adamant that the the investment or the financial investment hasn't been great because they they're worried that like they they send someone like to international tournaments and and spend all that like big budgets and then you know the a season later the 
you know, the athlete goes, oh, sorry, I'm, you know, I'm getting engaged, I'm going to get married or I'm, I'm having a child. Sorry, that's it for me. Bye bye. And without that funding, it's so hard to compete on an international level, isn't it? Because I look at Team GB and they're basically professional athletes who are being properly funded. And it's so hard for other countries and not many countries around the world, even big countries are funded. Is that a problem with the Federation at the moment? Uh, to be honest, like in, in Egypt, like the the main funder of sport, to be honest, like currently, especially individual sports, not pro sports like, you know, football, like soccer and that, um, is the government. There's good programs. The government like has good programs for athletes and they, you know, they they have, you know, good funding for it. But it's it's the actual, you know, like for in terms of women it's how you know how long the, the 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 sustainability or how long they can stay you know the the human factor they that you know you can't control yeah yeah um when you travel with the girls do you travel all over egypt uh, to box or is it mainly in cairo no it's not in cairo like this year it was in cairo because of covid Okay, and they didn't want to sort of like, you know, send them far away and, and travel and, you know, risk, you know, their health with traveling. Um, but normally it's in different like uh, cities, like around Egypt. And they're like, mostly like the elites, their tournaments are in upper Egypt. So it's like in the bottom part in the south. And that is like, um, when we talk about culture, it's a very, very con like conservative and very strict um, in Upper Egypt. So it's really hard. Like I remember us going uh, once the year before last year and um, the girls had to like make weight and they were skipping rope out, like, you know, outside the hotel. And the guard was like, you can't do that here. You know, you can't do that here in public. You go do that in your room in private, you know, we can't just have, you know, the men will stop and watch what you're doing. So it was, it was pretty, um, that must be quite tough from you, uh, for you who's grown up in Australia, yeah. you know, different yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but I respect, you know, like you go to other countries and, and you have to respect their values and culture. You know what I mean? Mm. It's, mm. um, it's, it, it is what it is. Uh, you know, there's not much you can, you can't change the world. So you just have to come halfway, I guess. Even the temperature must be different because it can be so hot. And a couple of your training facilities are outside, aren't they? How difficult is it training in those sort of heat, that heat? Uh, in, in summer, it's hot and dry. Like in Cairo, it's like, you know, we use fans. We normally train evenings. Like, so it's after sunset. We don't like train during the day. So it's a bit cooler, like, but still, like, we don't, um, most boxing clubs um, in Egypt, uh, like the ones that are members of the federation, the, the ones that actually, like, compete, um, they're mostly outdoor. Like, there's hardly any boxing rings or any boxing clubs that have, like, an indoor um, training facility. Uh, it's just the private gyms, you know, the, the ones that are like, com like commercial, those are the ones that are indoor, but the other ones are mostly outdoor. They have like a big shade that covers, you know, the area. Um, sometimes they use fans, sometimes not. Nah, that, that wouldn't work in Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't, it hardly rains here. It hardly rains in Cairo. Like in Cairo, you get maybe four or five days of rain a year. That's just about it. Now, as a coach, I help coach as well. Um, oh, okay. you, you see boxers in all their emotional states, you know, when they're nervous before fights, you know, the, on top of the world when they win or the tears when they lose. What sort of bond do you, have you formed with these girls that you're coaching? Look, um, we're like we have a great bond right now like you know we even go out like you know to recreational trips and you know we're actually going to one like next week so we're off season but we they still train like you know they still come three times a week um so we have that kind of bond we we go to places together um they talk to me about their personal life and you know if there's something that they need to discuss 
um, it's not just about their health or eating habits and that it's also about like as you said like emotional you know issues um, some of them try to hide it um, you know before tournaments like you said like dealing with those emotional things like you know if, if one of them maybe is suffering from a cold or something and we had that we had that they would hide it and not tell me even boys do that even boys like if they have if, if they have a tummy ache or if they have a cold but like you know they're about as tomorrow they don't say anything because they don't want to disappoint you or they don't want to like they're worried that they would just look like a loser I, you know it's the mentality you know young people's mentality um so sometimes they hide but um but we we we're, we're kind of an we have an open line so we, we've come to that stage right now they if that answers your question and do you see quite a few female coaches in egypt are you aware of very few yeah very few hmm. there's only like three three four of us max and just uh, your interests about about boxing which are the boxes that you like watching uh in the amateurs or the pros both both which... uh well i love this Kiwi kid, uh, David uh, Nienka, I think. I can't pronounce his last name. The, he used to be an 81 kilogram. He used to be a light heavyweight. Now he's gone up to a heavyweight. Uh, he's got a world ranking. I think he, he's awesome. Like, I love watching this kid. Um, what about the pros? I mean, female boxing is booming. Uh, which pros do you like? Um, of course, uh, Clarissa Shields. You know, she's very, very strong, um, very, like, she's the perfect boxer. She's the perfect boxer, strong, aggressive, um, and she's a winner. Yeah. So she's the perfect boxer. I like uh, Katie Taylor because I think she's a role model as well. I, yeah, Katie out, Taylor's in and outside the ring. There's so many, there's so many good ones. Like, you know, it's so hard to, um, you know, just, like, fit, like, call them all, but there's so many good ones. Now, you come across as very driven and very passionate to change the sport and to improve it in Egypt. You remind me very much of, I interviewed uh, Ad, uh, Mosin Mullah Adiozli, who's a national coach in Nigeria. Uh, lovely woman, but you both come across uh, where you, you're trying to push the sport in Africa and make it. Where does that drive come from, Sally? Um, why boxing? I love it as a sport. Like, you know, it was one of the like very few sports that um, maybe reflected, uh, I, you know, I was able to reflect uh, a lot of things, you know, maybe my, uh, my confidence, I had issues with my confidence and it was, you know, and it was really hard getting in the ring there, you know, being like a boxer and now even as a coach going up, you know, and, and, and being in the corner, it's the same thing. Um, that was a good push, but like changing like uh, the, the sport here, like in Egypt and working with women and, and changing the, the whole, I don't want to say change the culture. Like I can't do that. You know what I mean? I can't do this. Uh, but I really want them to be accepted just like in any, like in other sports, you know, they kind of like, uh, in other sports like especially martial arts like here in Egypt like girls and and even weightlifting and like they, they sort of like they've had it going a long time ago so this is why like I really want them in that sport to prove themselves there there's good quality boxes here they could get somewhere and I really want to help them do that I to be honest there's only like myself and two other maybe female coaches that are trying their hardest um, to make it happen, to make this actually happen. And, um, and you know what, like, as I said, the, the president of the Federation here, he's like really generous. Like, you know, he will really, um, he won't stop you. Like, you, you know, there's nothing that he can do. You know, he's not, I, I don't think he's prejudiced or anything like that. So he was, he's allowing me, he's giving me the opportunity. You know, he, he said, look, if you can get me even one girl, you know, one special girl that can represent the country, you know, go for it.
just do what you can. So I'm just trying and we'll see what happens. And didn't you get an award often? Didn't they recognise you in... I've, yeah, I've, from the Cairo zone, which is like a state, you know, like in Australia, like the Cairo zone, yes, I've had like, you know, um, a couple of awards. Uh, yes, when, when you know, there was a couple of tournaments and, and the majority of gr my girls like won. So, um, yes, they do. They, they're good at that. You know, if you, if you do something, they'll definitely reward you. Yes, most definitely. Well, thanks very much for your time, Sally. I appreciate Thank it. And you. all I of us with pushing boxing in Egypt, you seem to be doing a great job. I appreciate it very much. And, you know, you're more than welcome, you know, to come and visit us sometime. I know the COVID restrictions have, like, stopped everyone. Um, I want to say also that uh, this year, like, because of Corona, I mean, 2020, I mean, not 2021, um, I was supposed to have um, a young uh, Australian female, and she was like an indigenous, actually, um, boxer, um, come and visit Egypt and, and have a training camp here before the national titles in Australia, and she had even a fundraiser going, but unfortunately, this didn't go on because of COVID-19. Um, hopefully we can have something here, even with Ladies United, like, you know, we were discussing of having a camp here in Egypt. It's a lovely place. Um, it's very, as I said, it has a lot of flavor and, uh, there's a lot of girls here that would love, um, to be involved in, in anything like that. So you're more than welcome. Uh, well, I love when history and there's nowhere better than Egypt is there for history. Yeah. So it's As definitely on my bucket list. <laughs> Definitely, mate. You're more than welcome and you have a place to stay. All right. Thanks very much, Sally. I appreciate Thank that. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Cheers. Cheers.